So hitting the mark with your links. My name is Bob Stewart. You can find me up there at the top at Active Bob. So if you want to trash me on Twitter or or maybe say something nice, you can do that at Active Bob. I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Active Bob. But you don't care about that. You want to know all about links. So let's let's jump in here and talk about kind of part one. And I mentioned that we will we'll kind of break this up into two parts. Part one being the link itself. You know, what are some of the things we can do with our links to to make them more effective? And then part two, we'll talk about the landing page because you know the the purpose of a link on the internet is to to pass traffic to, to to other places and and our primary purpose with the link and especially as it relates to our blog post is going to be to pass traffic to our our own website and most of the time especially if you're writing the kinds of blog posts that we talked about in the SEO class most of the time your link is going to be passing a consumer to listings okay and i've mentioned this a few times in different places but there's three reasons consumers go online as it relates to real estate they go online to find listings and that's going to be the primary reason that they head online they go online to find home values and that's why a site like zillow does you know 14 million uniques or however many uniques they're doing a month and then they go online to find information and information really covers all it's kind of the bucket that covers everything else and that might be, you know, information about what neighborhood they want to live in or you know, information where they're really looking for something about a specific like subdivision or condo complex like we talk about in the SEO class. It might be information about the process of buying or selling a home. But at the end of the day, when they've got that information that they're interested in, they're still going to want the listings. And so we need to get very, very good, very succinct at being able to take them from a piece of information. And that's our blog is serving as that to listings and we want to make it as seamless as possible for them so a little history on kind of the the power of links and we're always going to look at links where is it from two sides okay the consumer side and the search engine side so let's take a look at, at links from the search engine side for a second and many many years ago um, a couple of guys in their dorm room at stanford i think came up with this search engine and we all know it today as google right they came up with this concept that they could go out, crawl around the internet, find content on the internet, and then rank it if somebody wanted to search for it, right? And we all, I mean, this has become second nature for all of us, the concept we can go out and look online and find whatever we want. But if you were online, I don't know, I got online back in like 1992 or something, and they had like CompuServe and then it would turn into AOL. And I remember I used to have these arguments with my roommates in college in, in 1995, six, seven, where we would you have some debate and I would go downstairs and try to search the internet to find the answer to this debate. And by the time I would find the answer three hours later and come back like valiantly to deliver this answer, they would be arguing about something else. So um, Google is, has been a huge friend of mine over the years. What they did is that they, they begin to rank content and they begin to do it based on the idea that, that there's certain words or keyword phrases on a page and they would look at the repetition of a keyword phrase. And that became kind of one of the first major um, ranking factors, but real estate agents, especially early on, realizing and some of the, the the kind of more savvy ones realizing this was you know people could go online and start to find information about real estate, and they were doing this in bigger numbers. Real estate agents got really crafty, and they said, okay, well if they're going to rank us based on uh, keyword phrases, well I'm just going to I want to rank for Seattle homes for sale, so I'm going to put the word Seattle homes for sale on my website five million times. Right, and then the search engine got smarter about that, and at some point there was actually people out there saying, "Well, this you know you could report sites that were keyword stuffing," and so people got even smarter and they'd put it in white font, right? So then you couldn't see it on the page, so a real person couldn't report it. But the search engines got smarter, and they continued to get smarter. Well, the the boys at Google kind of were the first to implement this concept of of u utilizing link signals as a way to rank content, and so real estate agents got really smart again. And so what they did is they went out and they created these kind of link circles or link farms. And they said, okay, hey, if you link to me, I'll link back to you. And if you link to me, I'll link back to you. And Jenny, if you link to me, I'll link back to you. And 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 this became what's known as reciprocal links, okay? Site A links to site B and site B links back to site A. And for a while that was fine, right? But the search engines got even smarter. And they said, look, if Jenny and, and Bob are exchanging links and Carrie and Bob are exchanging links, it just looks like Bob's really good at convincing people to link to his website. Is there really a valuable content 
to be found here. And so they've moved pretty dramatically to, to, to looking at link single signals in terms of a one-way link, right? A link from website A, let's say your active rain blog post, to website B, your own website. So today, we're really going to be talking about one-way links and the concept of links as it, as it serves to build your search engine presence of website B, right, is strictly going to be in terms of the one-way link. Then they came along and they said, all right, well, it's, it's fine to have like this link from a website going to another website, but maybe there's another signal in there that we can measure to get a better gauge of what website B is actually about. And so they've, you know, they came up with this concept of anchor text and anchor text is just the words that make up your link. So for a bunch of you guys, you know, everything I've said to this point is like, yeah, no kidding, right? Let's go in just, just for the sake of demonstration, let's go in really quick and look at the link as we create it in Active Rain, okay? And again, for a bunch of you guys, this is going to be pretty simple review, but I've got a blog post here that I've written about short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. And from our SEO class last last week, this would be a pretty decent blog post that, you know, it's, it wouldn't be shocking to, to know that people are out there searching for short sales in this neighborhood in Seattle. It's a very desirable neighborhood. People have this concept that the short sale is going to be a great deal for them to be able to find. And so they've found my piece of content here. Now I want to have a link out of my piece of content that gets them somewhere on my website. And hopefully that somewhere would be to short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. So let's go in here. I'm going to edit my post. You know, I've written the post out already for you guys. I need to find somewhere to, to add a link. So it's going to be real simple. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. So I want to create a link out of those words. I'm just going to highlight the text. I'm going to come up here, my little insert or edit link sign. Now, when I don't have anything highlighted, I can't click that, right? When I do have something highlighted, I now have the ability to click this. It's going to pop open a little box. I'm going to come in here and leave a link to my website. Now, when I'm, when I'm leaving a link on Active Rain, we kind of give you two options for the target. We give you open link in same window and open link in a new window. Here's where the, here's the difference between these two. If you're sending them to the site that you want them to be on, okay, I'm sending them to the site where I want them at. I'm going to open that link in the same window. If I'm sending them to a site that I don't ultimately want them to be at, and I'm going to show you in a little while a very a very practical reason why you would do that, but I'm sending them to a site I, I don't want them there ultimately, okay? I'm going to open that in a new window. W when I send them to a site I want them to be on, I mean, the best example of that is my website, okay? So I'm going to be sending them to my website to look at short sale properties in Wallingford. I want them there. My blog post has fulfilled its duty, okay? I don't care if they ever see my blog post again because the ultimate goal of my blog post was to get them on my website looking at short sale properties in Wallingford. So I'm going to open that in the same window because if they take, you know, I, my goal is that they took 50 clicks on my website and look at 45 different properties. I don't care if they ever find this blog post again. If I was going to send them over though to like down here, I have a link to the, the Wally Hood neighborhood blog that talks about the best news and events around Wallingford. If they were to click that link, I would want them back on my blog post because my blog post has not fulfilled its goal for me, right? Its goal being to get them to my website. So I would open that in a new window because if they click 50, if they click around on 50 different pages on this Walling, Wally Hood neighborhood blog, when they close it down, if I've opened the link in a new window, my blog post is still going to be sitting there behind the window they just closed. Okay. So again, if we want them where we're sending them, we open it in the same window. If we'd prefer that they be back on our post, we'll open that in a new window. So in this case, I'm going to open it in the same window because I want them on my website. And then for our title, we're going to make our title a, a a similar but different phrase to our anchor text. So once I create this link, the words that I highlighted will have become my anchor text, short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. So I'm gonna maybe say, find short sale houses in Wallingford. So it's a, you know, it's a pretty similar term, 
but it's a little bit different. And I'm going to hit insert. Okay. So now the search engines are going to look at this anchor text and this one way link out of my blog post back to the site or the page on my site that I link to. And that's the anchor text that they're going to look at to kind of give the site I link to a vote for that anchor text. All right. So they're, they, they see now, had I made this a public post, they see now that this site, servingyourtown.com, is about short sale properties in Wallingford. Now, we're going to talk why that's not exactly the page that I wanted to link to here in a minute. But now we're all real clear on how we create a link, right? The concept of anchor text, and anchor text is just telling the search engine, hey, this page that I'm linking to is about this particular thing. So... I already said this, one-way links are optimal, right? It's not going to, to be in your best interest anymore to go out and find Jenny and Jim and Jack and Jill and, and, and swap links with them. We need to figure out ways to get one-way links back to our website. And your blog is going to be a great source of, of content to be able to, to link off of back to your site. Now, well, how do we get the most out of them? Okay, so I, I kind of flipped forward to this screen earlier, but... Every single time that we do something on the internet, whether that be we write a piece of content, we're creating a link out of our blog, um, we have to look at kind of the harmony between, look, what does this look like to a consumer and what does this look like to a search engine? And, and everything we do has to kind of balance those two things because, you know, in the SEO class I talked about, like, if you wrote something out of 100 words and you got it to be able to rank – is that actually going to be a valuable piece of content when the, when the consumer lands there? Well, there's a similar thing with the search engine. It's like when we're, or with links, when we're creating our links, we want to make sure that we're creating them the right way for both the consumer and the search engine. So on the consumer side, here's a few things that you want to think about in terms of your link, okay? This, this, or your links. You want to get your link above the fold. And when I say your link, as it relates to the content that we're writing, the very first link that you're going to have in your piece of content is going to be a link based on the keyword phrase that you use for the title of your blog post. So we talked a lot about the concept of using keyword phrases in the titles of our blog posts in our SEO class. But in this case, my title is short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. So the very first link that I have in my piece of content is going to use the keyword phrase that I used in the title of my post. This is reinforcement to the search engines. Okay, and again, I mentioned this in the SEO class, but this is reinforcement to the search engines of what is actually on this page. It's also telling them that not only is my content here going to be a good resource for this keyword, I'm going to send you to another piece of content that's going to be a good resource for this keyword. And this is a, just another indicator, another flag to the search engine to rank me for short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. Now, I want this thing to be above the fold. And what I mean by above the fold is, right, this, you guys, if you ever read the newspaper, you know what this term means. But basically, it means that when they land here, they can see this link without having to scroll down. Because if they were really just looking for the prop, the short sale properties in Wallingford, they didn't want the, the information I was going to give them. They just wanted to see the properties. I want to make sure they know right away that there's a place they can click to find the currently available short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. You're going to use descriptive anchor text. And what I mean by that is... the Whatever anchor text I use, the person who clicks on that should understand what they're going to get when they land on the other side, okay? And what I see a lot of people do is they will make their anchor text out of the words like click here or click here to find short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle, and they'll make that whole phrase the anchor text. We're really just trying to tell the search engines, the page is not about click here to find short sale properties, right? The page we're linking to is about short sale properties in Wallingford. So we need to figure out a way. And like I did here, right? I didn't use click here. If you want to find the current, I didn't use this whole phrase as my anchor text. I just used my keyword phrase as the anchor text, but I made it pretty obvious to them that they could click on this little link here and they're going to get the information they want. What information? Currently available short sale properties in Wallingford. 
We want to give multiple options for clicking, okay? Because sometimes, so let's go back here. Sometimes they're actually going to read the whole article. Get out of here. They might they might think, gosh, this person's such an expert. I, I came here to find the properties, but I want to get a little bit of information about what I can expect to, to find. And so as they continue to roll down, we want to give them more than one option to be able to get what it is they thought they wanted. And so somewhere later down here in the page, we want to have another link that's a similar but different phrase for them to be able to kind of click on towards the end of our piece of content. Okay, so I might make a link out of these words right here, short sale homes in Wallingford. I could also use these image calls to action. And I have this one here, and it's actually a little bit outdated. This one says, um, Green Lake foreclosures or something. I, I might have wanted to have found another image that said short sales and, and had it be in Wallingford. These kinds of images, I did a whole class on calls to action. And if you went to activerainuniversity.com, you can find that class on calls to action. In that class, I talk about how to make these kind of these image calls to action, these, these other ways of getting people to click on things out of your blog post, uh, above and beyond just the basic anchor text links that we would be using. So I'm not gonna dive too much into how I created that image and how I could make a link out of it. We talk a bunch about that in my calls to action class. And again, you can find that at Active Rain University, which you would just go up to the top of any Active Rain page right here and click university. So that's, that's possibly considering other calls to action. And I talk about a bunch I don't know, eight or 10 different kinds of calls to action that we can get into our blog posts on top of just that, that, you know, that, that thing that's become very common, the link for people to be able to, to click on. Okay. So now let's look at it from the search engine side. So we're adding links into our blog post and, and the, the purpose of the link in the blog post is to get the site we're linking to, to rank better, right? Cause we talked about one way links being a signal for the search engines. So we need to make sure that we do a few things on the page. The first one, and I already mentioned this, is anchor text matching your keyword phrase. So that very first link on our, on our page, on our piece of content, needs to be a link that utilizes anchor text that matches our keyword phrase. And from a consumer perspective, I talked about it being above the fold, but from the search engine side, it needs to be the highest link or the first link in, in our piece of content. Any subsequent links that you would use, you wanna use a semantic phrase, right? A, a similar but different phrase, or a phrase that relates somehow, because we're trying to show the search engines, look, we're not stuffing a bunch of keywords in here, right? We're trying to show the search engines that there's, you know, there's, there's other links in here that are kind of similar, but they're, they're not exactly the same. Another reason that we do this this start to get a little bit technical now, but another reason we do this is any page on your website that you're linking to, a search engine will look at the links that are coming into your website and they will look for natu a natural pattern. And with Google's most recent updates of Panda and Penguin, one of the things that they're really pushing towards is kind of trying to get rid of this black hat SEO or, or people's attempting to manipulate the search engines. And so they will look at like the link profile of a page on your website. And so if every single time I had linked back to the page on my website that had short sale properties in Wallingford, if I had used that exact phrase every time, let's say I had a hundred links coming back to that page and they all said short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. Do you think that's what the search engine would naturally expect to occur? No, because if somebody else out there linked back to our website, saying this is a good place to find short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle, they probably wouldn't use that exact phrase. And if a hundred different people link back, there's no way that all hundred of them would have used the same phrase unless there was some concerted effort, right? So in our subsequent link, right, the one that I would put like right down here toward in this last paragraph from a consumer perspective, because they would be able to then, you know, be done reading and have an easy access to the content I want them to find, but from a search engine perspective, we're going to make that a semantic phrase, similar but different. In, in my case, short sale homes in Wallingford versus short sale properties in Wallingford. 
And then a little bit ago, as I was showing you the difference between, you know, landing them on the same page or landing them on a, a new tab, I talked about linking out of your content to something that's maybe not yours. And one of the one of the things that it's SEO Moz is where I go for a lot of my search engine information. And the rest of it's just stuff we've learned over 10 years of doing this. But one of the things that SEO Moz has kind of spotted in a lot of the testing they've done is if your content links to another piece of content on the internet that the search engines find authoritative on the subject matter you're writing about, that can help your content perform better. So another link to a high authority site on the topic or the subject matter that you're writing about. So let's go back and look at my blog post. So I'm writing about short sale properties in Wallingford. So I really have two options of things I could rank to or I could link to out of my blog post where the search engine would say this, there's, this site has authority for that topic. One would be short sales, right? The other one would be Wallingford. Now, I'm in real estate and I don't want to link to another site out there that's short sales if it's not mine, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to utilize this piece of content and I've already done it here, so let me get rid of it. I'm going to utilize this piece of content to link to something that the search engines find authoritative on Wallingford. And how would I know what the search engines find authoritative on Wallingford? I would just go in here and I would just search for Wallingford, Seattle, okay? Here's my options. Here's some of the sites that the search engine says, this is an important website for Wallingford. We've got Wikipedia. We've got the Wallyhood. So I'm going to link to this Wallyhood blog. I could link to Wikipedia. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to somewhere in my content. It's definitely not going to be the highest link, right? Because we want that one to be our link back to our website matching our keyword phrase. But somewhere in here, I'm going to get a link back to another site on the internet that the search engines find authoritative for some component of my subject matter, in this case, Wallingford, Seattle. I'm going to open this in a new window because if they click that link and they start looking around on Wallyhood and they go 20 pages deep, I want them to just be able to close that window down and find my blog post sitting behind it. So I'm going to insert that. Let's go in here and, and insert our last link as well. That one's gonna be in the same window. Okay, so we're ready to go. We've got kind of our our three links. And somebody inevitably at the end is gonna say, how many links should I get into my blog post? There is not an optimal number of links other than every, sub, every additional link that you add to your content will take away a little bit of the juice from any of the previous links you have in there. So if I have, let's say there's 100% of link juice to pass out from my post. If I have three links in there, each link's going to get kind of a third of that juice. If I have 100 links in there, each link is going to get, you know, 1% of that juice, right? There's evidence to suggest a search engine will index up to 100 links on a page. Would I ever tell you to have 100 links on your page? No, never. Um, you know, maybe if it was kind of like a summary page that was going to send them to a bunch of really good other information, you would have a hundred links, but in most of your pieces of content, you're going to be looking at somewhere between three to five links. And I would probably suggest that if it's a post of this nature, right, very real estate specific, this, the types of things that we talked about in our SEO class, we're going to be linking to, we're going to have like three links in there. The first one's going to be our exact match anchor text above the fold. The second link is going to be to that other authoritative site on the internet about some component of our subject matter. And then the last link is going to be that semantic phrase link at the end that gives them a chance, had they read the entire article, to continue to find you know, what it is that we hope they were going to find out of there, which is the properties on our website that are short sale homes in Wallingford. Okay, so, so that's the link. And this is, I don't want to say it's not rocket science because if you've never dived into this stuff before, the concepts, you know, once, once you see them, they're pretty, they're pretty easy to understand.
Okay. Let's talk about the other side of this then. And the other side of this is going to be the landing page or where are we actually sending somebody via the links that we use. And there's a couple of kind of truths in online marketing or, or truths in how people search the internet. And one of them is we have a very short amount of time, four to six seconds. And as the years go by, this gets even shorter because people's attention spans are so stinking short these days, right? We have this very finite, small amount of time to capture someone's attention when they land on the page that we've sent them to. Okay. That's a truth. It's an absolute truth. Oops. Okay, here's a second one. The more clicks you force someone to take when they land on the page we link them to, the higher likelihood they will leave that page before taking the action you wish they would take. Okay, let that one sink in for a second. The more clicks you force someone to take, so we land them on our website, it's the home page. Now they got to find the little button that says listings, and then they got to fill out their criteria, and then they got to hit, right? It might be four or five clicks before they've actually gotten to short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle, if we sent them to the wrong place. You will never learn this lesson harder and more expensively than if you do pay-per-click advertising. And we did, we've done a lot of pay-per-click advertising over the last 10 years. And one of the things we learned is that if we were running ads for Seattle real estate, homes for sale in Seattle, there was a massive difference in our conversions and how much money we ended up sp spending per lead when we sent somebody to a list of homes in Seattle versus just sending them to the front of our website and hoping that they would find their way to homes in Seattle, right? People want what they want and they want it right now and you better have given it to them in that quick amount of time. So let's look at, at these couple of pages from the perspective of we have four to six seconds to capture someone's attention. So when you land here, like wh what do you see first? Well, the first thing I see is listings. Right, And had I been telling them they were going to get listings, I would have wanted to have sent them to a page that, that had listings on it right away. Now here, right, th there might be some listings on this page, but they're below the fold. Right, The very first thing, in four seconds, can I pick out exactly what I wanted? Maybe, right? Are people getting familiar with maps and could they? Yeah, I would say that, that you know, on a one-off basis, meaning one person lands here, they're going to, to find what it is that we wanted. But uh, when a hundred people land here, right, it really starts to ex exacerbate that we need to give them exactly what they wanted in four to six seconds. We need to give it to them in as few clicks as possible. So on your IDX sites, if you're a real estate agent, I'm going to imagine that you have an IDX site. If you don't, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Um, but yet you have a couple of options, right? We have a home page, we have a search page, and we have a, an exact search already performed. And the most optimal of these places that we can land somebody is on an exact search already performed because hopefully the results are going to be there in their face. It's not going to take them any more than a second or two to find the results. And there's not going to be any additional clicks for them to have taken. So let's look at a few live sites. And I pulled these up this morning, like literally a half hour ago. And I just went through, well, I pulled this one up. I just went through a couple of, of sites on Active Rain. I'm, I'm, this is no way to pick on the Werners here in, in Lakeside. Um, I literally just pulled them at random earlier today. And so I mentioned we've got three places we could link to the, the home page, right? We could link to our search page or we could link to an exact search already performed. Well, here's their homepage. And, you know, I've seen enough real estate sites and you guys have probably seen enough real estate sites that if you landed on this page and were looking for listings, where would you go? Well, I might be a little bit confused whether to go to listings or to new home search, but it'd definitely be one of those two. But I would only know to be looking there because I've seen a lot of sites and it's either going to be here, it's going to be down the left or something. But in four to six seconds, do they clearly know that they were going to get short sale properties in Lakeside? Well, they may not. They may be out of here, okay? But let's say they were to go into listings. Well, this would be a second page we could land them, right? Instead of just the home page, GoWerner.com, we could land them on GoWerner.com forward slash listings. This would be a better page to land them on than the home page because we've eliminated the one click of them having to find listings or find new home search. 
Let's look at the, this other example. And this is an example from a market leader site. In the spirit of full disclosure, market leader owns Active Rain. And there are other sites out there that function in this fashion. I just hope that you have one that, that has the capacity to do what we're going to talk about here. Okay, so here's the homepage on this site. This would be a little bit better because there's actually a search option right here. So they maybe could go in here and search for homes for sale in Wallingford, but again, it's extra clicks I'm forcing them to take. We could send them to this listings page. This is a little bit bigger search with a bunch more options here that they could search for, right? That would probably be better than the homepage. But it still wouldn't be the optimal place. The optimal place would be, and let's come back here and perform the search on this site. Actually, let's do it here first. The optimal place would be, if we were talking about Wallingford, would be us going in, me, the guy who created the piece of content with the link, and performing the search, and we were talking about short sales, right? Performing the search for them. So I'm in Wallingford, and I'm giving them short sales. And I'm going to hit search. And that's going to give me this big, long URL right here, right? It's no longer just servingyourtown.com. It's this huge URL that gives them the 12 short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to come back here. That is going to be the link that I want to use. That is the optimal place that I can send somebody on a blog post that talks about short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle, right? The page on my website that gives them all the short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. Because now, instead of having landed on my homepage, instead of having landed on my search page, they're going to land on 12 short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle. Let's look at this other site and how and the difference between this site and the, and the Serving Your Town site from Market Leader. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna do a search and I don't know this market well enough, so I'm just gonna select a bunch of cities in here, but you know, the consumer getting here would, would have to figure this all out. You know, if they were looking for short sales in Bennington, they'd have to come down here and find Bennington, um, REO or bank owned, right? That's the only option here. So I guess we're doing foreclosures in Bennington, Blair, I don't know what kind of results I'm going to get here. So I'm going to try to leave this thing kind of wide. Let's actually just do it all. So we're going to give them, you know, all. We're just going to give them bank owned properties in this person's marketplace. And again, I don't know what those are, but when I hit update results, notice I've got 248 bank owned properties in here. Okay. That's good. But I want you to see what happened up here. Do you notice this URL? When we performed that search, this URL didn't change. And the reason that happens is because this website or this IDX is a framed solution. And what that means is the stuff that's happening in this frame right here is not actually taking place on this website. It's being served up from some other server. And so no matter what we do in here, watch, if we were to say maximum price range of let's say 210,000, that's gonna give us a lot less listings. It's not gonna be 248 anymore. But when I hit update results, watch this. This little, this up here, it never changes, right? Update results. So if I wanted to link to this page of all the, the bank owns under 200,000, all 230 of them, I would think that I would just come here and, and grab that URL, come over here and create a link out of it, right? In this case, what would our link be? It would be bank owned homes under 200,000 in Lakeside, right? And I'm going to link it to where? To this page, which looks to me to be getting the 230 results. The problem is it's not. It's not going to give me that. It's going to give me a reset. Oops. Insert. It's going to give me a reset page that doesn't actually have the listings. It's going to force them to take the clicks. And we know that when we force them to take the clicks, watch. Boom. It's the same URL. But it doesn't have the same stuff in there. 
Like, what happened? This one's supposed to have 230 bank-owned properties. I don't even know what this one gave me. It gave me some preset search that they have on there. But if I don't have the ability to create these unique URLs, right, Wallingford short sales, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be forcing the consumer every time I pass them to a page, I'm going to be forcing them to either look around for four to six seconds to find what they thought they were going to be getting, or I'm going to force them to take additional clicks, right? Additional things they have to fill out on the page in order to get the information they wanted. And the two truths are telling me, look, the longer it takes them to find what they wanted, the more likelihood they'll leave. And the more clicks I force them to take to get what they wanted, the more likelihood they will leave. That's a major, major difference in the way that, that IDXs perform. So this ability for us to, to land them exactly where we want them is going to make a huge difference in your ability to take the traffic that your blogs generate and turn that into prospects and leads for your business. Okay, so let's talk about what's on the landing page from, from both perspectives now, because remember, it's always consumer and search engines, right? So what's on the page? Is it want? Is it what the consumer wanted? So if we were talking about short sale properties in Wallingford, did, did, and they clicked the link that said that, do they get that, right? Not do they get our website's ability to let them search. Are there title tags related to the anchor text? And what I mean by that is when we come back here and we look at, like this page right here, the title tag of this page is Wallingford Homes for Sale. Does that relate to our anchor text? Yeah, I mean, it's not a 100% match, but a link that says short sale properties in Wallingford that links to a page that has a page title of Wallingford Homes for Sale, that's going to be a better correlation than, let's say we were doing bank-owned properties in Arlington, and I don't know if there's it really doesn't matter what we do here. The anchor text at the top of the page is always going to say featured homes for sale. No matter what our search becomes down here, because we're in this frame, it's always going to show the same thing, right? So we want to make sure that we have a website that allows us to, to have title tags on the pages that we link to that relate to our anchor text. Right? We're just trying to paint this real clear picture for the search engines that this is real stuff. There's, it's real content. It's a real person creating it. I'm doing the right things that the search engines are asking of me to get my website to rank better. Is there content on the page that relates to the anchor text? Well, here, doesn't matter what's in this frame. A search engine cannot read what is inside this iframe. Okay, they can read it, but it's being read from whatever site is serving this stuff up. And in fact, if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen right now, this is an iframe from npdodge.com. Right? If I was to click on any of these links, you see that one goes to bottom left there, searchne.npdodge.com, right? They're not getting any additional love on GoWerner, right? In this case, when the search engine lands here, they look at the title tag first. It kind of matches the anchor text. Then they're going to look at the content on the page and see, does this match the anchor text? See that? Short sale? Those are words they can read. So, so we're getting our, our content onto the page here. We have content on the page that kind of relates to our anchor text. And a search engine realizes that Green... They're really, really smart. <laughs> they realize that Green Lake's close to Wallingford or it's easy access to Green Lake and... Um, Ravenna, these words like craftsman home and 1940s Cape Cod, right? There's a bunch of content on this page that a search engine can consume or index that relates to not only the anchor text that we used here to send them there, but also the content we had on our page, right? So again, it's this harmony between all of the stuff that we're creating, the, the places that we're sending, not only people, but the search engines to get our own websites ranking better and to get the folks to actually start taking the actions on our pages that we want, which in our case here would be to start looking at short sale properties. And then do you have lead conversion on the landing page? And, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a 
rather healthy debate in the real estate industry in general about lead conversion and and you know get how much access do you give consumers to the data that we have and oh well i don't want to do lead conversion because they could just go somewhere else and and find it um you know if you're not utilizing your website as a as a lead tool for your business you're probably missing out i mean if anything you're at, you're you're wasting efforts blogging. Now I'm not saying you're not you're never going to get a client, you're never going to get that person that picks the phone up and calls you, but a lot of people, especially when they're 8 months away from buying, they're 6 months away from buying, they don't want to pick the phone up yet, right? If they were doing a search online for short sale properties in Wallingford and my my blog post came up, they might just want to see the properties. But when they get there, I want to have lead conversion, right? I need to have some way to to convert them into a lead. So as I get here and I start to look around, any of these buttons over here are going to are gonna try to get their information. In, in the case of these market leader sites and in a lot of kind of more well set up lead conversion websites, the Boomtowns or the Tiger Leads or, um, or you know, the market leaders, the sites that the agents are using that are generating leads for their business, they have this kind of lead conversion thing on here somehow, some way. And in market leaders case, when they go to try to see the second home, it's going to try to get a name and email address from them. It's not going to try to get their, their phone number, their address, their kids' names, their social security number, right? It's just going to try to get some basic information from them. We're going to follow up later once we've already got a small piece of info from them and try to get a little bit more. But for now, we're just going to have a you know a small lead capture piece that basically says look we'll trade you all the listings you can look at them all you can have listing alerts set up for you in exchange for your email address so we need to have something on there from a lead conversion perspective i don't even know i'm sure that this has lead conversion somewhere right it's got these buttons over here that people can click and um you want to make sure though that you, you have that lead conversion piece when you're kicking them over from the content you've written to what they ultimately want, which is the listings. So why an exact URL? And I've, I've kind of harped on this, right? This ability for us to be able to create these exact URLs. Well, it's what a real person wants, right? If we can't send them to the exact search already performed, like I showed you in the instance of the, the Werner home site, it's going to take them more clicks to get there. It's not going to be what they wanted. There, there's a much higher likelihood they'll leave. Search engines can crawl these exact URLs. And so when we get in here, I mentioned before, this page, the search engine can't see this stuff inside. On this page, they can, right? They can crawl this content. And what that means now is the link that we've created out of our blog post is actually serving to get the search engine on our own website, indexing content there. That's a good thing. Right? We want the search engines over indexing the content on our site. We want these one-way links pointing to our website to prove to the search engines that our site has good information about something. And in this case, it's short sale properties in Wallingford, Seattle, because that's what our anchor text was. And then an IDX will keep the info fresh. It, uh, any IDX that performs in a manner where you can create unique URLs will keep that info fresh because our blog post is going to be alive for a long time. Right, five years from now, somebody might find this blog post. When they click this link right here, it's not going to show them the 12 properties that were for sale today. It's going to show them the hopefully less short sales, right? Five years from now, the, the four short sales that are available in Wallingford five years from now, or the 18 that are available a month from now, right? It's always going to keep this info fresh because it's always looking at this URL and it's pulling that data out of your IDX feed and saying, hey, show them properties in Wallingford that are short sales, right? There's all kinds of stuff that we can do in here. We could do, you know, homes for sale with a master bedroom on the main floor, waterfront homes for sale in Seattle. We could do uh, bank-owned homes for sale in Renton, Washington. We could do homes for sale under a certain price range. We could do homes for sale in a subdivision. Look down here. If I wanted to do you know, homes for sale in a certain subdivision. I could actually craft a search that will land somebody on houses just in a particular part of my marketplace. If I wanted to do, like in our in Seattle, the Bellevue School District is really, really strong. People, when they move into the area, they want to have their kids in the Bellevue School District. They've got like three high schools that are ranked in the top 100, right? We could do blog posts and target people that might be looking for homes for sale in the Bellevue School District. 
And then we could show them just homes that went to Bellevue schools, right? There's all kinds of things we can do. And we talked about some of these different kind of keywords and different ways we can target people in our SEO class. But we want to make sure that when we're doing that and we're landing them on our content and we're passing them through to listings, which is what they probably wanted in the first place, it's fresh info. It's easy to find. There's no extra clicks. It's exactly what they wanted. From a search engine perspective, it all matches up. 